This is an extremely quick video on matrix exponentials. Uh, I decided to make this because this is one aspect of maths that I find really, really interesting. The idea that you can actually take e to the power of a matrix, or at least you can take an exponential of a matrix. Uh, the way you do it is by making a series, which I suppose I, I've done a video on um, writing e to the x as a power series. You can use Taylor expansion to do that. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, perhaps check that one out first. But if you've got a matrix, let's say, I made it a 3x3 three three matrix, just for simplicity. So capital X equals this 3x3 this three three matrix here, and I've got my matrix elements inside. Uh, simple 3x3 three three matrix. Now I want to take the exponential of this matrix. How, how do I do it? Well, what I'm going to do is construct an analogy between taking an exponential of a number and taking the exponential of a matrix. So, to take the exponential of a, of a number, it's fairly straightforward. Um, you, in practice, you're not going to necessarily construct an infinite series, but a definition of, the, of, of an exponential is um, e to the power x is equal to this series, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus a load of other terms to infinity, x to the n of n factorial. That's, that's the definition of to the power x, or the x exponential of x. So, in the same way, we can we can perform an analogous process with the matrix. So, I want to take the exponential of this matrix, this 3 by 3 matrix, and I said that's equal to the exponential of the matrix. So, similarly, let's write exponential of the matrix in terms of um, an analogous power series, 1 plus x. Sorry, the, this is the identity matrix, which is the sort of matrix version of 1. Um, the identity matrix is a matrix which has a diagonal of ones and is a square matrix, so it has the same number of rows as it does columns. Um, this is the identity matrix in the sense that uh, it, it behaves in the same way that one would do with respect to things like multiplication, matrix multiplication and, and addition. So, for instance, um, the identity matrix is its own inverse, which, which is similar to the way that one is its own multiplicative inverse. So, this this I is the matrix version of 1 per se. But the rest of it's really really simple. 1 plus the matrix plus the matrix squared. And and the matrix squared, this is perhaps not a very good way of writing actually. I probably should not write it like this. I probably should actually write these slightly differently. I should probably write it like that. Um, in the sense that it's probably a less counterintuitive way of writing it. What I mean by that is that I'm Instead of x squared, I'm, I'm multiplying the matrix by itself, using matrix multiplication. Um, and in this way, x cubed would be the same as multiplying x by itself, and then by itself again, in a matrix multiplication way. So, in matrix multiplication, of course, you don't you start multiplying from the, from the right, so you multiply um, the last two first, and then the next one with the last two, and so on, and you multiply further and further to the left. So, it, it's not, it, because of the... Um, non-commutative properties and matrices, you've got to be somewhat careful in the way that you do this. But if you understand matrix multiplication, then it should be obvious what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So the exponential of the matrix is equal to the identity matrix, in this case a 3 by 3 matrix, plus itself, which is just what I started off with, plus half of the ma it's um, the matrix that I started off with multiplied by the matrix I started off with. And remember, this is matrix multiplication um, plus a load of other terms. And of course, by of course, by the time we get to quite high um, orders in this series, it's going to be very difficult to do the calculation because you're going to be multiplying lots of matrices together, and it gets quite tedious and long. Um, for that reason, I've only written out the, f the, f the first entry. You can see that the one comes from this bit, then that comes from this bit, and then this this longer bit comes from multiplying this matrix with this matrix. And of course there are some additional terms um, that, go to, that go off to infinity, like this. Um, in fact, it's, it's quite difficult to write this in a sort of closed way, a sort of general form. Um, it involves it involves a lot of different functions, some of which trigonometric as well, which I suppose you can kind of understand because um, trigonometric functions have a a sort of similar looking power series to an exponential, so maybe that shouldn't be too surprising. Um, some trigonometric functions anyway. 
Um, but you do end up with an awful lot of weird functions if you try to express this in a general form, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but what I will do is take the exponential of a number of quite simple matrices just to demonstrate how this can be done. So the first one is to take the exponential of a zero matrix, which is fairly straightforward. I mean, so this is a zero three by three matrix, so I'm going to take the exponential of it using the same definition, this one here. Okay, so I'll start off with the identity matrix, and then I add itself, and then I keep on adding terms. So I'm go I'm keeping on adding. Um, so for the squared term, it'll be the matrix multiplied, the zero matrix multiplied by itself divided by two, the, num the number two. Um, and for the cubic term, it's the zero matrix multiplied by zero matrix multiplied by zero matrix divided by the number six, and so on. So of course, the only term that's going to contribute is this identity term, because all the others are going to generate zero matrices. And the zero matrix plus the identity matrix is the identity matrix. So of course, the exponential of a zero matrix turns out to be the identity matrix which makes sense. The exponential of a matrix containing zeros generates um, the matrix version of 1. So that's basically saying e to the power of 0 equals 1, which, which we sort of already know, but in, in sort of a matrix way. Right then, I'm going to do the exponential of a diagonal matrix because this is it's very easy to write the exponential of a diagonal matrix in a closed form, in a general way. So the exponential of this matrix, so we start off with the the, 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 the power series definition here, so that's the identity matrix plus itself, plus itself here, plus um, the matrix times by itself over 2 here, and then plus a load of other terms, I didn't write that on, plus a load of other terms. That's probably why I didn't write it on, but you get the idea, there's, there's a load of other terms on the end there. Yeah. There's a load of other terms on the end there. Well, I've got two. Yeah. Okay then, so writing it as a single matrix, we can add, adding matrices is very easy. You can just add each term term wise. So if you add if you look at this element here, you can add this to this to to the uh, the matrix that would result from multiplying these matrices together. So matrix addition is, is fairly straightforward. So if we do the calculations we end up with this. 1 plus x11 plus half, and the x11 squared comes from x11 multiplied by x11 here. Uh, of course, this is matrix multiplication, so we also have to do 0 multiplied by 0 plus 0 multiplied by this 0, which of course is 0, and then divided by 2, so we get the half x11 squared. And if you continue to do this, the pattern will become obvious, and that for each, for each one that you're doing, you only end up with one additional term. So you're only going to end up with an x11 squared. If you do the cubic term, you're going to end up with an x11 cubed, and so on and so on. So it's going to end up. You're going to end up with a very simple power series, like this, involving. Oh, that is there. Sorry, involving each and each consist, constituent diagonal element. And if we look back at the number definition of the exponential of a number, it's exactly the same as this. There's no difference between this series and this series. They're identical, and that means we can replace this with the exponential of the element. So this is e to the power x11, the x11 element. And this, of course, is e to the power of x22, the x22 element. And this is e to the power of x33. So we end up with the the exponential of a diagonal matrix, one that contains zeros everywhere else except along the diagonals. This, of course, is a square matrix, will equal the exponentials of each element in the matrix. So that makes it very easy to work with. Um, and finally, you can sort of look through this example yourself if you want to. This is just extending, extending this and looking at the exponential of the identity matrix in number terms that would be e to the power 1. Um, and, of course, all I'm doing is exactly the same procedure. This is actually slightly simpler because I'm because I'm taking the exponential of, rather of a general diagonal matrix, I'm just taking the exponential of a um, identity matrix. So I produce the same sort of series and then I get these sorts of sums here. And these sums are identical to 
this again with x equals 1. In other words, e to the power of 1. In other words, the exponential of an identity matrix is equal to e along every diagonal. Again, it, it sort of makes sense if you think about the analogy. Okay then. I think, I think that's everything.